Uh, I, you're not connected to uh, your on your um, audio. Ah, uh, can you hear me now? Now I can, yeah. Ah, uh, we meet at last. Keith, Sarah, G Gabaka. Uh, I'm trying to pronounce your name. Sarah Baika. Sarah Baika. Sarah Baika. Yeah. Sarah Baika. We meet at last, Keith, Sarah Baika. It's a pleasure to finally meet you at last. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I am, it is such an honor since I've been seeing you and a lot of voice acting. And not only that, Dad, but I saw but you. I, saw I also saw you in the dark night. Yeah, I was in it. Yeah. You are such an incredible actor in that movie, actually. Oh, thanks. It's, it's what I do, you know? That's why I always tell it out with many others who interviewed me the most. Speaking of that, I have a lot of things I've been wanting to ask you. Well, maybe I can answer some of them. How does it feel about being a voice actor of animation? It's a job, you know. It's a fun job, but it's a job, you know. I see. I see. And that's very good to hear. Because all I know is that Many actors who I interviewed with, they've told me many things about how to get into voice acting. To get to voice acting, to voice acting. To learn to learn to. We kind of have a bad connection. Your 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 voice is very. It's got, we've got a very bad audio connection. I, I, oh, I kind oh, of reverberate. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. But um, I'm just trying to let you know that, because the fact is, to be a voice actor, you must learn to. Just make your own voices, you know? Because when you do, only then will they see that you really are a perfected voice actor for any anime of shows, you know? Like when you got into the show uh, Young Justice, where you get to play Mr. Freeze. Am I right? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, that was quite a while ago. You know? Yeah, because I've heard you back then when I was only a very young is you were excellent as Mr. Freeze. I thought to myself, man, I only wish I get to see more of Keith in as Mr. Freeze. Because it will explain the backstory about why he's doing this. He's doing this. Like, all no been, real, I mean, I, I did, you know, really all I did, I did an audition and they hired me to do the part, you know, and that was Yeah, because yeah. you know who's, who actually gets to know me well? like you you know about everyone else like fred tattashore who actually knows me well I've learned. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know i don't know him well but i you know we we've done jobs together and, and we've yes, been in auditions yes. but all well, I now know, all auditions are like online and most jobs are online so you very seldom actually go anywhere yeah. i see i see it's all it's i know is that is that there's something I want to tell you, but um, but uh, I've actually heard you also from Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes because you're the voice of Ronan the Accuser. Um. Okay. Uh, again, a job I did some time ago. I, you know, it was a yes, and, yes. Uh, was kind of a one-off, you know, yes, uh, but it was fun. Yes. Yeah. I do your voice very well, well, like this. I am Ronan the Accuser. All must I, kneel before the supreme. I am Ronan the Accuser. All must kneel before me. Yes. <laughs> now that, that's the thing I remembered back in my childhood days, you know. It's, because all I know is that my friends and I have been seeing not only, not only you in that show, but others as well. And most importantly, my cousin, Martin Marcel Marcello, actually played the game that you were in called uh, 
if I'm not mistaken, Skyrim, correct? Uh, yeah, I, had, I, did, I think I played every Dark Elf in Skyrim. You yeah. Know, yeah. Cause, cause... And then, plus, I, I was a story, I was Kellen, the storyteller. Uh, I was, uh, and Skyrim and Elder Scrolls are sometimes kind of interchangeable, you know. And I did a lot of Hyrcanians and Argonians, you know, and uh, whatever, you know. I mean, I did all sorts of, I was a, a Katjus, whatever they are, you know. Uh, That's very good. Because I remember you that well as that as those characters, you know, because me and my cousin played that game and you were in it. I was in it a lot. Yeah. They, uh, they used me a lot for that game. Because I must say, you are quite well as as those characters, you know. Oh, well, thank you. It's what I do. And, you know, the thing about me being, a, you know why I wanted to do when I finally graduate, because I'm a senior right now. Because you know why? Because you know what I really wanted to do. Hmm. I wanted to be a voice actor and writer, because I practiced a lot of voices very well, like yours, for example. You know who voices I also do. Mm -mm. I do, uh, for example, Tony Todd. Tony Todd. I don't you know, know who Tony Todd you know, is. He's the guy who does the guy candy, man. man. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of I scary. do it like this. <laughs> well, that, that's good. You should put a reel together and send it to an agent. You know? That's how you get work. <laughs> Actually, I've already gotten already my got agent. It. And that agent right. is, my, is my mother. Is, oh, okay. Yes. And there's something you should know about my mother. But... um. She's actually a golfer of a show called Holy Moly with Stephen Curry. She was famous. I, 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 I've, I've heard of it. I've never really watched it. You know. It's oh, yes. A, kind of a game show, right? Yes. yes. As far as I could tell, my mother met Stephen Curry and Rod Reichel in person. It made me realize myself the only way to get myself on TV is by doing something that will make me get myself into there. And that's why, and that's I, why I, I got in touch I, with many actors in the world just so I can gain their help to get me on TV. Yeah, well, I'm still trying to get on TV, you know. It's uh, it's, always, yeah. it's never yeah. never ending. That's all I can tell you, you know. It's, you know who I was able to get in touch with? A creator of a Cartoon Network show called Victor and Valentino, Diego Mulano. Yeah, I, I don't know him. It's... You may not know, but I know him very well because he's actually the friends of my mother's cousin, Daniel Cuevo, in real life. Good. Do you know what me, me and him discuss about? No idea. He discuss about an episode that I'm working on for him that involves me acting and writing. And you know what he told me? He told me to have it done so that he can help me become a voice actor and writer for his show. And that's where I thought to myself. Sounds like a good plan. You know? But you know, like I said, you know, uh, you, know you should uh, write something up and send in a writing sample and put that's together. That's what I was, doing, what right I was now. doing right now. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that. You know, that's what I'm doing right now, I'm... making sure I, it looks perfected. Mm -hmm. And you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking of that if I ever get, finally get into Victor and Valentino, I will definitely cast you into the show. To be one of the characters okay well i hope that day comes someday yeah. don't worry i will and i will never forget it never because all i know is that you're one of my favorite actors actually well thank you it's what i really liked you know because along with fred tattashore tony todd keith david many others you my friend are a perfect actor of, uh, who does a many great voices, including Mr. Freeze, Ronan the Accuser, and of course that guy from the DC uh, Showcase yeah, Death, yeah, yeah. and many varieties as Variety. well. Oh, great. It's, you are quite a great actor when it comes to me. And one person on Facebook actually told me once that you're, you're actually from the original Equalizer show. 
back um, in the yeah, 80s. That was, uh, I did that from 85 to 89, yeah. Yes. I was yes. Uh, sort of the sidekick in that, you know. I Mickey see. see. My... It is quite remarkable of you being a sidekick. And of course, acting with the lead actor who just, you know, does action, of course. Edward Woodward. Edward Woodward was a, was a, he was a wonderful man, you know. Very sad when he passed away. See, you are quite remarkable when it comes to leading with the with the actor, actually. Because as far as I can tell, you are just quite perfect as that character. I just thought to myself, man, I always wish he could be in more movies, you know? You, you and me both. I wish I could be in more movies, you know? <laughs> but that's... You no, know, it's not not always my choice. You know? I see, I see. Because, because however, however, if I if I ever finally get into 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 many shows, I will cast you into my own show that I will create one day. And you know why I call it? I call it Legends of the Olympian Gods. It involves. The origins of the gods of Olympus that they should have made all these years ago. Mm. So Didn't that's... they kind of do that though? Uh, at one point, where the Clash of the Titans, you know, uh, sort of you know with Cronus and all that. Uh, Cronus, yeah, because you will be a perfect Cronus, you know. Uh, okay. You you being Cronus will be a perfect way to fit a villain's voice. And you know who I would be the voice of? Young Zeus. Young Zeus. Wow, Young Zeus. Okay. Hold, hold on one moment, if you please. And my dad's calling me. Okay. Yeah? I'm getting an interview from the voice actor. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. It's just uh, my father. His name is Robert Brennan, and he owns the company Happy House Improvement, who helps a lot of people, you know. Right. It's, yeah, he's a pretty cool dad, actually. Because for me, I grew up without a father, you know, all my life, until one day I found my real dad, the dad that was married since 2015, Robert Brennan. So is he, is he your real dad, or is he, or is he married to your mom? He just married to mom, married but to I mom, found but my I real dad. Married. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes I just have this much time living without a dad until na until to a few years later, I found my real dad. And I finally have a chance to spend time with him. Good. It's glad. There's something you should know about me, Patam. I have autism, actually. I was diagnosed when I was only three years old. And yeah, some people call me special for a reason. I know lots of things that gets me to be quite awesome, you know? Including getting to know you and your, and your acting in movies, you know? Okay. It's all I know is that people think, how do you know all this? And I say, it's quite simple. I just, I just, just, just learn everything. Yes, I know. I know several uh, young people with uh, with autism somewhere on the or somewhere on the spectrum. You know. Yeah, yeah. I even told that to other voice actors like Dave Fioni, you know, and and of course Jim Maskamen and many varieties as well is all i know is that they've all just talked to me about what about how special can i really be am and turns out i have this great knowledge to give inspiration to everyone you know because you know what i wanted to do all my life when i finally become what i was meant to be no. when i earn a lot of money I want to use it to help many people in the world because for too long, I've seen many bad impacts in the world, like those who are sick and homeless 
doesn't have a home? I was growing tired of all that. I thought to myself, if I ever earn a lot of money, I would definitely I would use definitely it to help many it. people in the world so that everyone can live better lives just like we all are. That's a very laudable goal. Yeah, that is my true goal, actually, to help everyone, to make sure they all live better lives. Well, it sounds like a great goal. I hope you get to do it. You know? Yeah, and I do too. Because all I know is that me doing whatever I wanted to do is what gets me to be a better person. That's true. I've learned that quote from every movie, you know, because every movie that I've seen, they taught me about who I am and what I can possibly do. I can never hide from myself. That's true, too. You can never hide from yourself. Yeah. yeah. You can try, but it won't work. Yeah. yeah. That's why you That's just need to do whatever it can to just do whatever, whatever, do whatever is right. Do whatever is right. Okay. Come on. Come on. It's, by the way, you know what's you know what's coming by October, by the way? No. October first is actually my birthday, actually. Well, happy birthday in in a month. In four yeah. Weeks. yeah. And also, you should know that that Young Justice will be coming back by 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 that month, actually. Really? Yeah. Boy, I thought, right. man, man, they should have just cast Keith into the show, bringing him back as Mr. Freeze, because he will be, it will explain his origins about saving his wife, Nora. It's, you with Nora Frice will be uh, quite tragic, actually, because I've learned about Mr. Freeze's origins and about why he's becoming a bad guy for it. And, and often their backstories are very interesting. These uh, the villains, you know, more interesting sometimes than the superheroes. Yeah, because all yeah, I because know is that I know is that when I there's a saying I've once learned: when we grow old, we start to understand the villains' pain and suffering and why they're doing this for. It's because they suffered a loss of someone they've truly loved, and that's. They lost well, everything. That's actually very true. You know, it's one thing that you learn as you play a lot of different characters over the years is that you learn that no one acts out of a sense of doing wrong, you know, unless they're a total psychopath. That what you do, everyone, <laughs> I hate to say this, even Adolf Hitler acted out of a sense of that they were doing something right. Tell me about Tell it. Because yeah. who knows? No wonder how that how the Holocaust happens for. Well, the Holocaust is the man was insane, but that's he didn't just because he was insane that didn't mean that he was right, you know. Yeah, yeah, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't. Everyone he wasn't isn't that insane, insane. Yeah. they just suffered, they just suffered their loss. loss. Yeah, so I've learned so that I've actually. Learned. Because no, when it's I it's a horrible time, yeah horrible time because when it comes to time however things can be a little bit tragic when it comes to suffering everything that they ever wanted all their life whatever happens never let those impacts happen because if you know what happens if you end up if you end up treating someone or end up bullying someone or do all bad things to them Otherwise, it will create a monster out of someone that they'll end up taking revenge on you or what they have, you did to them back then. You know who has the perfect example? I don't know. The, the, the Candyman, candy candy for, example. for example. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of horror, you know, I have to say, so I've never watched The Candyman. It's... The Candyman, the Candyman movie Man. isn't only just a scary movie, but that movie is actually based upon racism, which I'm starting to see the impacts of it. Because I thought to myself, I should never let racism happen in the world. 
is it will bad, cause a bad impact to everyone here in this earth. That's a simple choice that I have to make. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm glad you said that. that. You know. That's why you're just great at advices, you know? That's what I've seen you well, in a I'll lot of movies. advice. You know, I, I, I probably led many people astray. Yeah. So I know that you are just quite just good at like advices good at when it comes to movies and shows, however. Uh, well, those are characters I play, and it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what I do, you know. It's, Being, yeah, you know, it's, it's like yeah. as an actor, you're not necessarily the character that you play. You have to realize that you're you're see, yourself, see. and you're you're doing what you know your character is is written, and you know, what you need to do with it. So that's what you do. You know? I see. I see. It's all I know is that you know what's the first voice I've heard from you when I was little. No, the first voice I've heard from you was Trigon in Teen yeah, Titans. Titans. Oh yeah. I do remember doing that. Yeah, they they had several different trigons, as I recall. Though I mean, I did it once or it's, twice. It's, yeah, because the first voice was you before it was Kevin Michael Richardson, who who eventually took over the role. Right. And you who else got the yes, role? Got the actually, role, actually, I'm sorry, your your voice broke up when you just oh, asked. That. Sorry, sorry. The other roles the other that was roles taken that was in trigon was, was uh John Bernathanol who is actually in the movie Fury as one of those soldiers. And also the other one is John Demetrio. And, and the latest one is Darren D. Paul. Mm -hmm. But I do Darren T. Paul's voice very well. Like this. No, Shinnok is indisposed. If only I could. I am Quan Chi in charge of this realm until the master's return and who do i think for for ruining my rug okay great i practice a lot of voices in years you know mm -hmm. as far as i can tell things turns out perfected actually seems like you're very into it you know that's have you ever taken any have you ever taken any lessons i do i do from steve blue okay good because I do okay. Steve Bloom's voices very well, like this. Well, I can't say how much I begin to notice you this way. I don't think so. I'll blow that bounty on your head if I were you. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard you and him, and him in that show called Megas XLR. Where you were in the show. Uh, yes, I, again, it was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I don't yeah. remember it that well. It's, you know, it's, that's okay. It's just, I really liked your voices in, in a lot of shows. Well, you. you know what I was thinking of doing? Hmm. I was thinking of making a video for you about your voice showcasing to make everyone remember <laughs> your voices so well. Well, okay. Well, sounds like, um, sounds like a project. Yeah. That is a project is a I'm project actually working actually on. Because I want everyone to remember your voices and why you should actually be in a lot of shows. Like the one I really wanted you to be in called uh, DC Superhero Girls 2019. Because it's DC Comics, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, you would be a perfect voice for a villain, of course, when it comes to you interacting with Tara Strong, Gray DeLiesel, Kari Walgren, Kimberly Brooks, Kari Walgren, and Mayana Velasco. Mm -hmm. Is it would be such an amazement for you to be in there? I'll be like, that's my friend. That's my friend. Well, I'd I'd be happy to be in it. You know, is you are quite perfect for it. I even told that to Fred Tattashore, You know. Yeah. And he agrees, actually. Fred, Fred gets a lot of my work. He gets a lot of the work that, that we, we read for a lot of the same things, and I think they hire Fred more than me, you know, which is okay, because Fred's very good and a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He was he was, he was nice, too, actually, because um, we spoke to each other, like, three times, actually. 
because the first time was through phone call, but second time he wanted to see me face to face because he really? wants to know about who I am and what are my true intentions. Mm. So I explain out everything that I wanted to say for a very long time. Just, you know who I heard his voices from? I have heard all of his voices since Rip Jaws from Ben 10. I, you know what, I I know Fred and I worked with him, but I don't know his entire curriculum vitae. I'm sorry to say your resume. Yeah. It's okay. That's why I'm teaching you this, you know? Hey, um, I have to go in a few minutes. So I just want to, I'm going to have to leave like by 1.30. So I have an appointment it's after okay. that. Okay. It's okay. It's, I really it's, wanted I really to meet want you since I've always wanted to interact with you since I've seen you in the dark night. I thought to myself, man, if I ever get in touch with these actors, I will love to explain to them everything. Well, that's when I finally got in touch with you. You know who else I got in touch with besides you? No idea. Fred Tatashore, John Zalippo, Dave Fioni, uh, Jim Maskamen, Joe Outsman. And now you, Keith. Mm -hmm. I've yes, worked with yes. uh, several of those people, so, you know. Yes, those people are actually very cool, actually. Yeah, they yes. are. And they gave me some good advice, you know. What, what was the advice that they gave you? The advice is never forget never your forget purpose your and never forget, never forget what you wanted what to you. do. And just whatever you do, be yourself and just always do what's right. That's All the way of being a voice actor. Those are three, those are three very good, uh, good things to tell you, you know, always be yeah. yourself, yeah. always do what's right, you know, always yeah. be honest. Yeah. It's being it's honest, being is, honest actually is actually a good actually thing, actually, because, because you should never lie to anyone like this, because it will cause a very bad impact to happen. Yeah. That's why I learned from every movies, including The Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, Dark Knight was a good movie. Yep, you were the character Harvey Bullock, you know? No, I wasn't Harvey Bullock. Oh. I was, I was Detective Stevens. Harvey Bullock was, uh, who was, who was Harvey Bullock? I, was, so I, did that I, was different, I did that in a different Batman. I did Harvey Bullock in a different Batman, not The Dark Knight. Oh, I see. I see. Because all I know is that I've seen the the DC comparison of the evolution of the Harvey Bullock in years, and Harvey Bullock was one of them. But its name was changed to uh, to the character you told me of Detective Stevens. Yeah. Yes, yes. exactly. That's why I've always learned from you. But I, I did, I did, I did Harvey Bullock later in, in another uh, piece, you know, which was uh, like a year or two ago. It was actually yeah. pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. yeah, that is kind of true, actually. Because I saw you there as that character. It's, you know who I really want Harvey Bullock to be played by? Who? A voice actor named David Ludge, which I talked to Fred Tashor about what kind of lines he should actually say. So he'll be like, Hey, long time no see, old friend. Harvey Bullock. It's so good to see you, old friend. Well, how's the family? Good. <laughs> My daughter's actually with her friends right now. Well, I guess it's just you and me, old friend. Well, that's very good to hear. Oh, I'm just doing Fred Tattasaur and, uh, and David Ludge. And that's good. Because he was impressed. Well, I've got to wrap it up now. So, what is there anything else you want to talk about? We've got. I got about a minute more. I can spend. It's, it's, I have one more thing to tell you. Okay. When when I finally get into Victor Valentino, I will tell the voice cast director Khalid Sunderman to cast you into the show, just to let everyone know who you really are, and who you actually voices as, just okay. to make sure. They all remember you well. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank that's you. what that's I what wanted to do, to do, you know? You know? All right. that, that, I will never forget it. Never. Okay. I probably won't die
It is such an honor to finally meet you. And I'm glad it's been an honor to meet you too and uh, try to stay healthy and try to stay well and uh, listen to your stepfather, your father, okay? You too. You too. All right. And I'll see you and then. I'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.